Physics is a weight room for the mind. If you're preparing for an athletic contest or a physical fitness exam, say two weeks from now, you don't wait till the day before to start working out. If you try to fit two weeks of workouts into one day, it results in pain and injury. <laughs> Similarly, your performance on a physics test will be best if you've been practicing on a regular basis. I'm Dr. Courtney. The scenario in this problem is a boat leaving a dock. We're given the thrust that the boat's engine provides, the mass of the boat, and the rate at which it's accelerating away from the dock. We're asked then to find the retarding or the drag force of the water on the boat. Since we're dealing with forces, masses, and accelerations, as we interpret the problem, we realize that the big idea has to do with Newton's second law. So we're going to use Newton's second law to find that drag force let's call it F sub D given the thrust let's call that force F sub T the mass of the boat M and the acceleration As we develop the problem, we're going to draw a sketch to represent physically what's happening in the problem and then make a point-by-point -point plan for how we will then evaluate it. So the scenario is this. We have a boat accelerating at 2.5 meters per second squared. And I've changed these exact numbers a little bit so that you can work the problem out on your own later. We're given that the mass of the boat is 930 kilograms and that the thrust force provided by the boat's engine is 4.1 kilonewtons. As we move forward to evaluate this problem, one of the first things we want to do, since we know that it has to do with Newton's second law, is to make a free body diagram. Because we want to label all of the forces acting on the body. And then we want to specify a coordinate system that will prevent us from getting mixed up with our positives and negatives. And then we want to check the units of our given value values to make sure that they're in MKS units. If they're not, we want to convert those. Now we're ready to recall Newton's second law. Which is that the net force, or the sum of all of the forces, is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now you'll notice that I put the net force and acceleration as vectors because those quantities have both magnitude and direction. We have more than one force acting on this boat, so we want to then express the net force as a sum of all of the forces acting on the boat. Then we can solve for the drag force, substitute our values to calculate a value for the drag force. And before we report our final answer, we want to check the significant figures to make sure we report it to the right number. Now, as we begin to evaluate the problem, I would like to draw the free body diagram next to our original sketch. So if we have the boat represented by a point here, the boat has mass, so of course there is a force of gravity acting downward. There is the thrust force of the boat, and there is the drag force which is acting to slow down the boat. Now we need to specify a coordinate system. I will choose the 
normal Euclidean system where x will be the horizontal axis to the right and y will be the vertical axis up with the positive direction up. So now we are needing to check to see if the units of our given values are in MKS units. Kilograms is good, meters per second squared for acceleration is good, kilonewtons is not MKS units. So we want to convert that. So the first and second steps of our evaluation are on the drawing. Next we need to convert that thrust of 4.1 kilonewtons times 1,000 newtons per kilonewton, so 4,100 newtons. And we'll just hold that in reserve for when we need it later. Now we're going to start working with Newton's second law, which again says that the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now the fact that force and acceleration are vector quantities means we need to think about the motion in the problem. We quickly see the boat is accelerating in one direction, which we call the x direction, and the thrust and the drag forces are in the same direction. So this reduces to a one-dimensional problem. That means we do not need to co compute coordinates, uh, excuse me, components. We don't need to compute vector components in this problem. So we'll rewrite this that the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Now we need to express that net force as the sum of the forces acting on the boat, which we've already identified in our free body diagram. The acceleration is in the x direction, so it is the forces acting in the x direction that we are concerned with. We see that that is the thrust force, F sub t, and the drag force. So these are going to add to make the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Next we'll solve for the drag force then by subtracting the thrust force from both sides and substitute our values the mass of 930 kilograms times 2.5 meters per second squared minus 4100 newtons. That gives us a drag force of negative 1,775 newtons. Now if we consider how many significant figures to report, let's go back to our given values. And the least number that we're given is 2. So let's round this answer to the nearest two significant figures. So the drag force is minus 1,800 newtons. Now that we've completed calculations and have a numerical answer, we should take a moment to assess whether that answer is correct or whether it makes sense. So the first thing that we'd like to do is to check the units. Not whether they're MKS units, but whether the units we get after our calculations corresponds with the type of value we are calculating. So as we substituted our values for the drag force, we see the kilograms meters per second squared, that's the same as newtons, minus newtons, gives us a final unit of newtons, which is what we would expect for force. So units of newtons are correct for force. But what about the magnitude of our answer? Well, for one thing, we know that this drag force has to be less than the thrust force of the engine, right? Or else the boat is not moving forward. So our thrust force was 41, 4.1 kilonewtons or 4,100 newtons, and since the drag force is 1,800 newtons, that's less. So we're okay there, or at least that lends some confidence to our answer. So we expect that the drag force should be less than the thrust force, and it is. Finally, what about the fact that we got a negative answer? Well, if we look back at our coordinate system, we specified that positive x was toward the right, which means that negative x would be toward the left. And the fact that we got a negative answer for the drag force means that the drag force is acting up in the opposite direction to the thrust force, which is also what we would expect. So the sine of FD is negative, and this is expected 
So we've had three ways to check our answer that it is reasonable, so we have confidence that our answer is correct.